Episode 33, Interview with Filmmaker Paulina Manso. Welcome to the Visionary Variety Podcast, where we cover cool stuff like photo, video, film, books, and technology. So, switch on your brain and enjoy the show. Welcome back, guys. You're listening to the Visionary Variety Podcast, and I am one of the hosts of the show, Daniel Grove. We've also got with us Nate Gunn. Hey, guys. And our special guest today, Paulina Manso. Hello. She pretty much does everything uh, concerning movies. I do. <laughs> she has written. She has directed. She, I think she has produced. And she has acted. <laughs> so I'm sure a ton of other odd jobs all in the middle of that. <laughs> Very impressive. And we are super excited to have you on the show, Paulina. Yay. I'm excited to be here. Before our podcast went live and we were just really brainstorming our brains out, coming <laughs> up with ideas for episodes, uh, you know, it hit me. I was like, we got to have interviews and I was like, wait, who are we going to interview? What cool people do I know? <laughs> and you were probably one of the very first that came oh. into my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember you I remember you telling me, it's like, hey, I'm going to do this podcast. Like, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll probably ask you to be on the show. And so I've been waiting. <laughs> By the phone, yes. just waiting. <laughs> well, I'm so glad it's finally actually happening. Yes. Well, guys, how have y'all's week been? Anything interesting going on? I have been extremely busy. Um uh, just, you know, running post-production on things, it just previous projects and pre-production on new projects. Ooh. So that's, yeah, I've been just running around. My brain is split into many different <laughs> directions, but yeah. <laughs> Do you ever get them mixed up in the project you're working on when you're multitasking? Do you ever get them like the wires crossed in your brain? <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, especially because I work with the same people. So it's like, oh, that's tricky. It's like, what, what, what are we working on? <laughs> <laughs> Which character are you again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you the good guy or the bad guy in yeah. this one? <laughs> yeah. What about you, Nate? Anything going on? I had a couple of deadlines I've had to finish. Um, I celebrated two family members' birthday back to back. So Ooh, that's expensive. Kind of personal <laughs> life and work life kind of been in and out. So, yeah. Yeah, we also had a birthday, and it's today. So we're recording this episode today on 9-11, uh, which is uh, not not a great day in history, <laughs> but it is a good day for my family because that's when my first child was born, Aww. Hadassah. Happy birthday. She is now six years old. Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Yeah, she's not a little kid anymore. She's all in school and, you know, a six-year-old, so it's, it's crazy. <laughs> Other than that, my wife is about to have a baby about maybe any week now. Oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> Do you guys know what you guys are having? We don't. Uh, Surprise. A human. Yes. Preferably. Yeah. Yeah. I love when people people ask me, what do you want? I'm like, a human? Yeah. (laughs) Is that so much to ask? (laughs) (laughs) We've had the boy surprise and the girl surprise. So this is going to be our like true surprise baby. We're just going to find out when it comes out. Yeah. And uh, I've also been editing like a madman through uh, San Japan photo shoots, which has yeah. been really fun. If you guys follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you probably noticed I've been posting like a crap ton of cosplay photos. And that's literally because I finish about one shoot a day and I post one in the morning and I post another one at night. And yeah, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> How many did you do? I counted. I did 20 photo shoots total. Wow. And it was going to be 24, but I had, or 23, but I had a few cancellations last minute and I was able to fill most of the gaps, like, like the, the week of, or almost the, the few days before yeah. uh, I had people filling in the, the spots where people back, bailed out on me because of personal, whatever stuff that came up, they just like could literally couldn't make it to town for the, for the convention or whatever, but I still had a few gaps, but you know, it actually worked out really good. And uh, I don't mind having a few gaps in a day that's six hours straight of photo shoots. Yeah. It's kind of nice to have a little break. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Or it's like, okay, I just get to sit down for 30 minutes now and like eat my lunch and like relax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't so, know about yeah. you, but that 30 minutes went by quick. <laughs> it did. It felt like <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> but it was really fun. I had a whole bunch of um, photographers come out and assist me, like for moving lights and helping with little minor costume adjustments and moving things around. I, and the photo shoots went, re- I mean, they're already only 20 minute photo shoots each, but they went really smoothly because I had so many people, usually two people at a time helping me. Uh, and that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
probably in a, you're probably used to having a crew to help with things, uh, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, yeah, I, having a crew it does help, but when you're mm-hmm. in the budget, <laughs> Ooh, yeah. you, you end up doing many jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I've been a one man show for like eight years, 10 years. Uh, so I, I'm just now realizing that not only do I need help with the complexity of some of my shoots, but also it's such a good learning experience. I mean, you've helped me. You, you came and helped me with uh, an X-Men photo shoot, right? Yes, I did. It was um, Nightcrawler. Yeah. Yeah. So the same, same thing. So, you know, for someone that's wanting to learn photography, has no clue how to do a shoot or how to do lighting or what, how to use a location, like the, helping me at a photo shoot is like gold for them. Yeah. It's really, I think it's really good for them to just watch and, and listen and see how, you know, I don't do things perfectly, but they at least can see how I do them and um, learn that way. So it's, I've been doing that more for my benefit, but also for other benefits so they can learn yeah. with me. And it's really fun having more than one people there. <laughs> oh, definitely. It's a win-win situation. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we had we had a good time just sitting and chatting with the other photographers, and honestly, I'm learning stuff from them. Like, I talked to one guy, well, he's like 24 years old, um, and he has this awesome business plan where he provides regular photography coverage to different businesses. Hmm. He's got like a karate school, um, like other, I forgot, other small businesses and local businesses where they pay him monthly, and he goes and gives them new photos for their social media, and he runs their social media. I'm like, dude, you are like rocking it. Yeah, that's that's great. <laughs> Like, I never even thought of doing that as a business plan, but it is genius. And he's doing really good. He's pretty much full time and he's not even like 25, 26 years old yet. Wow. So props to him. So I, I learn stuff too when I get to hang out with these people. Yeah. Anyway, well, let's get on to our interview, uh, Paulina. We're going to be talking about all kinds of fun, awesome, and as I like to say, juicy stuff. Yes. So uh, <laughs> let's get started with the basics. Uh, Paulina, what do you do exactly? Um. Well, for film, I do I do a lot of stuff. Mainly, um, I'm an actor, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, lately I've been doing my own content. Um, so I started Very writing cool. about two years ago. I started writing, um, and that has just kind of taken off for me. I uh, gosh, how many scripts? I I couldn't even tell you how many scripts I have written, <laughs> but. Um, Several have been filmed already, and it's cool. nice to see them get done. So, yeah, I'm an actor. I'm a screenwriter. I just started dabbling with directing. And, of course, if I'm doing my own projects, I have to produce them. So I'm a producer, too. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Was acting like your gateway drug? Yes. <laughs> acting, I kind of got you into the whole thing. Acting started it all. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a lot of models and as they get more serious into modeling, eventually they get into photography. And I think that's a really cool switch over. It's sort of like you, you started with acting, um, you know, maybe you thought that was like your main thing, but now you discovered more passions and further extensions of your creativity. And that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it's, uh, you know, I know a lot of actors that sometimes if they're not on set, they get, get depressed. Um, it, it, Mm. it's a thing, the film community, when you're not on set, you're depressed. Um, and so, the way I deal with that is like, I'm just going to write another film. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, cool. Yeah. So you, f- you filled in that gap of, you know, not having a job or, yeah. you know, maybe even feeling like you're not a good actor because you don't have a job and you actually did something. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's a creative outlet going on, uh, you know, for awesome. now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I think it's the same with photographers. Photography is a hard career Mm -hmm. to really be successful at because there's just so many. And, you know, there's there's uh, preconceptions of how much someone should cost and shouldn't. And it's just tough. But when photographers don't have gigs for an extended amount of time, that's where a lot of photographers quit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And and that is like not time to quit. That is time to learn and challenge yourself and try new things. You know, heck, if you need to work for free to learn something, just do that for mm-hmm. a limited amount of time and learn a new trait, you know, learn a new type of photography yeah. yeah. or take lessons and learn Photoshop inside and out while, you do, while you're not being hired in the summer. Like do something with your time, you know? Exactly. Yeah. That's pretty much the same yeah, with film. You know, yeah. there's like a lull, you know, in between gigs. We, you know, I get together with my buddies <laughs> and it's like, mm-hmm. hey, you got any scripts? I sure do. <laughs> Let's film one, you know. So how long have you been doing stuff like this? I've been acting pretty much since age six. But it was wow, mostly, wow. yeah, it was like mostly theater. Um, my parents uh-huh. introduced me to the wonderful world of theater. Um, <laughs> and from there, uh, you know, like middle school, high school, college, 
theater. My yeah. major was theater. And then when I say four years ago, that's when I got into film. So uh, film wise, it just four years, but acting wise, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I'm sure you got your nice 10,000 hours of acting in. So you're professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're not a newbie. <laughs> Nope, not by any means. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, every time you're on set, you're on, it's a brand new experience. Yeah. So it's, it feels like, you know, something new. What, what can you tell us about any recent projects you've been working on? This year, I, I uh, wrote a web series um, called Public Displays of Insanity. It is a... <laughs> Sounds nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a good family story. Yeah, it's actually about <laughs> actors um, and kind of oh. like what they go through. Uh, gives oh. a little insight into the film world, their personal relationships. It's it's a comedy. Uh, we did seven episodes wow. of <laughs> 10, 15 minutes each. And it's in post-production right now. Um, as a matter of fact, yesterday we, we were able to watch all seven uh, rough uh. cuts. So you binge watched your own show? Yes, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> binge watching much. party. Yeah, so that's where we're at right now. Um, you know, deciding do we need to film a little bit more? You know, do they? What does it need before we send it off to get yeah. color corrected and sound hmm. mixed? So once everything is perfectly done, is this like something you can submit to like a big company and say, would you like to buy this? Or like what, what happens next? Yes, that is actually our plan. Um, we filmed this in the highest quality possible that we nice. could afford. Uh, actually, yeah. we filmed this in um, uh, Netflix approved cameras. Um, oh, with their, which is what? Can you tell us what that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they have a list. Uh, like, so all their <laughs> shows, all their shows wow. um, are uh, like anything that is a Netflix original has to be shot in like a certain, they have a list of cameras that they have approved that huh. is okay for them to put on their show. So hmm. we, we shot ours on a Panasonic Eva uh, Ooh, nice. camera. Ooh. Yeah. So that was wow. that was one of them, and that's that's the one that we had access to, and we shot it on that. Yeah, once all this is like perfect and as funny as it can be, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Yeah, we will. Uh, we will show it to Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, whoever wants it. Yeah, I bet there's an interesting dynamic when you're editing a comedy because you have to have that comedic timing. Yep. Yep. And t editing and cutting is all about the timing. And there's a whole new level of that when you when it has to be funny. I never thought about that. <laughs> it's it's very interesting because it's it's like a whole, it goes in stages because I wrote this and it was hilarious <laughs> coming out of my head. You know, I was like, <laughs> this is so funny, guys. <laughs> and then, you know. Just trust me. Yeah. <laughs> and then the actors say it and... Uh -uh. You know, it's, it's like, not the same. it's not the same, um, you know, but, but, it, but it, it's really cool because uh, some actors added stuff to it that made it funnier huh. or they said nice. it a certain way that made it even funnier um, yeah. or we changed stuff yeah. that, you know, just wasn't making any sense. But it, but it goes, it goes in like stages and as a writer, <laughs> you have to be open to, it's like a molding process. Um Yeah. Because, yeah, because after that, you know, it's like you write it, then the actors say it. And then yeah. when it finally goes to editing, the editor has to put that together in like a funny way. <laughs> uh -huh, so it doesn't right. lose that. So, yeah, it's so common. Comedy scripts kind of take on a life of their own yeah. as they go through yeah. the pr process. Yeah. Huh. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Well, you know, now that I think of it, even A-list actors, you know, I, I think a lot of funny classic scenes, some of them or a lot of them were ad-libbed. They, they are improv. Yeah. I mean, we yeah. had quite a few moments of that in, in the show. Um, <laughs> we had this um, actually episode five <laughs> of <laughs> when we were in our Western set, we were fake filming a well, no, we were we were really filming a fake big production. So we had wow. this like one of the actors was playing a director from Hollywood, you know, and so like he like went off. I mean, like 
<laughs> and it was hilarious, like just the stuff that came out of his mouth. And I'm like, I can't take credit for that, you know. Uh, all that, all that pent up, yeah. all that pent up aggression towards, towards uh, directors. What, the producers, <laughs> directors. Yeah, he got the, finally got the, the voice. It came <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Get me my skittles. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Only the green ones. Come Only on. the green yeah. ones. And I actually have a line that mm. says, "I want all green M and M's." Yes. Because <laughs> uh, it's a that's thing. Such a classic stereotype. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yep. So they're very ha- interesting. So they have a list of cameras. Do they have a list of audio that you guys have to run through, and how many? Uh no, they didn't have audio though. Huh. But but you know, like uh, well, that I know of. Um, no, I, no, yeah. I didn't look into that myself. Um, the <laughs> art director of photography was the one that looked into all of this yeah. uh, stuff. Mm. But um, uh, sound was another thing that we had to be very careful on because. If you guys ever seen, you know, that's what makes or breaks a show. Um, yeah. yeah, audio is super important. Bad audio will, that that's a telltale sign of like yeah. low budget. Um, yeah. So if we want this to be seen, if we want this to be um, taken seriously, it needs to look like it could be on Netflix. So that's mm-hmm. what we're working on. Yeah. And yeah. sound like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, our, our last episode on the podcast was with uh, Brian Christofferson, mm-hmm. and we talked about, you know, this isn't necessarily about the recording side of the audio, but more, he, he's the music side. So we talked about how important it is to have, you know, quality music mm-hmm. behind things, because without the right music or with no music at all, man, cinema really falls flat. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And there, there's a really, I mentioned this last time, but I got to plug it in because it is so funny. There's a, a, a There's an account on YouTube called... Uh, mix minus and what he does is he gets classic movie scenes that we all you know know and love but he takes the music out <laughs> yeah and he kind of overdubs what real sounds would be happening like on set <laughs> and it's just so oh awkward God. and funny i, I, I would it. love to see that i mean as a matter of fact we have a scene where it's like a party scene and of course right huh? now it doesn't have anything no music so like oh, no. and so i mean it's hilarious <laughs> because when we filmed it there's no music, so all the actors are dancing People to dancing. nothing. Yeah, <laughs> so all you hear right now is uh, all the direction is like action, uh, uh, and then and it's like feet feet shuffling and yeah, people breathing and people, people moving to like non-existent beats and like it's like all right, uh, uh, moving more to the left, and now you're it's coming perfect. in, come in, actor, come in, <laughs> dance sexier, dance, yeah. dance, <laughs> move. <laughs> Yeah, and that's so funny. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 funny to see it with the music, um, but I cannot imagine like something like you know, yeah. Interstellar. <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> with no music. <laughs> well, Polina, I gotta I gotta boast about you because I feel super cool knowing you because you are in a Hollywood production movie, and now <laughs> we cannot talk about specifics about this movie <laughs> yeah. because it's an actual like. Hollywood movie. Yes, I signed <laughs> I an realize that. <laughs> there's some there's so, only so many things that Paulina can say without the the secret service busting in through our windows I hired know. by James Cameron and arresting me uh and putting me in Hollywood jail but uh <laughs> or putting her in Hollywood jail. <laughs> but uh yes, so Paulina was in Alita Battle Angel which is coming out December 21st. Hey, the day after my birthday. Which normally is the date when all the Lord of the Rings movies came out. <laughs> it's like always on the twenty first or twenty second. <laughs> so this is a like seriously awesome movie, uh, yeah. and I just it, it's so cool that I know someone that's in this movie. <laughs> I'm gonna go see it. I'm gonna go see it just to find you in yes. the movie. You, you better make the cut. If you don't make the cut, I'm gonna be ticked. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be too because I spent two weeks in this oh my. on this set. I like, Whoa. yeah, so I'm so, like, <laughs> so the day oh. of that movie, we're going to buy popcorn. And if you're not in there, be like, come on. And throw yeah. popcorn. <laughs> we're going to throw a popcorn all over everybody and yes. storm out of there. How dare come on, you. James Cameron. <laughs> I loved you, James Cameron. How could you do this to me? <laughs> Yes. I would love to do an episode, a movie review of After It's Out with you, Paulina. I think that would be so fun. Absolutely, yes. I'd love to. I'd love to come back and talk about it. Not only would you have been in the movie, but you also have like 
the perfect expertise for tearing apart a movie and talking about it. <laughs> yes, I can so tell you. So that would be super fun. Behind the scenes and everything. Oh, awesome. yeah. Then you can talk about it. Yeah. Yes, then I can talk about <laughs> and, it. And not not have the James Cameron Secret Service busting through your windows. I know. I don't want to be blacklisted. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't feel good for you. <laughs> We're not going to do that to you. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, so that's super cool. What is one of the hardest projects that you've done, whether you were acting or directing, writing, producing, whatever? What, what are some of the most challenging things you remember doing? Um, I think on I uh, probably my first film, which was The Fade Away, which you've seen. Um, mm-hmm, I did, and that was that was actually the very first script that I wrote. Um, wow! And I I didn't know anything about producing or putting together. <laughs> yeah, putting together a film like at all. I just just decided to. I've actually been wanting to write a film for a really long time. I would write little like stories or like short stories, but I didn't know how to write a script. And mm. a couple of years ago, I was like, you know what? Let me just let me just look up what is the format, what is the proper way to write a script, and I'm just gonna try. And before I knew it, I had written the script that it was 28 pages wow. long. How many words, <laughs> you remember? And uh, well, there it is. But you know, now what? So uh-huh. um, I was very fortunate to meet um, uh, my friend um, Robert Moore. When I give him a shout out, um, he's a fellow filmmaker who was also, you know, he was like, hey, you know, if you want to shoot it, uh, let's do it. And he ha- he has more experience than I do in how to, you know, go about making a film. Um, mm-hmm. So so we did. We, uh, we produced that ourselves um it was challenging because it was a long short usually shorts are between a minute to 45 minutes but ideally for film festivals you want them to be between 10 to 15 minutes is ideal Mm -hmm. i didn't know that yeah and the reason for that is because the shorter they are the more uh chance they have into getting into the festival and to be screened because they do them in blocks so if you have a really long short that takes up maybe <laughs> two films that they could have screened. Um, uh, so that's that's mainly the reason why. So this was basically a feature, a feature length film. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it was it was challenging because it was, you know, no budget. Um, all the actors were, you know, working for free. So we had to work around everybody's schedule location. It was it was. I mean, I had 12 characters, uh, seven <laughs> locations, uh, fights, you know, our lead yeah. actor, we got so lucky because he happens to be a stunt coordinator. Um, mm. <laughs> so he did all his own stunts and coordinated, you know, the rest. But it, it was, it was a challenge and I learned a lot from that. So that, that was, cool. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So learning the hard way is a really great way to learn. It's yeah. not fun. It's not fun, but, but you learn. But you'll, yeah. You'll, you'll never learn. forget it. You'll never forget. <laughs> what did Yoda say in episode eight? He said, like, fe- pain is the best teacher or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it is. So true. It's true. I, I learned so much of my photography stuff that I'm known for. I learned it the hard way, and it took mm-hmm. so long to learn it because I didn't have people to teach me. I didn't know, like, you know, where to learn or whatever, how to learn. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'll never forget those lessons I learned because they yeah. were burned into my brain. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, if you, if you, you do something wrong or, or, you know, you do something the incorrect way, um, mm-hmm. you learn and, you know, for your next project, you now know yeah. not what to do. So now, thankfully, I haven't had to learn through the process of any lawsuits. Uh, I got lucky that's, with that that's one. That's good. But. <laughs> yes, that's, that's always a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no lawsuit lessons, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> Definitely. So, Paulina, when you are, you know, sitting down to start something, um, or even when you're in the middle of, of uh, writing a movie or directing, producing it, do you... Like, are you trying to create something new? You know, are you trying to reinvent the wheel with with a project, with a movie? Or do you feel like you're kind of following an equation or really just like rules of how things work? And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you know you know what I'm saying? Like, are you yeah. trying to do something new every time or are you just sort of following through what works best? So I honestly feel like I do a combination of things. Um, they say In Hollywood, they say that all the stories have already been told. Um, I don't like that, but it's kind of true. But it's kind of true, and it's <laughs> it up to you feelings. to, <laughs> and it's up to you to 
I guess, say it in a new way, I guess, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I try not to, I try not to copy stuff. Sometimes it's really hard um, because, in fact, um, I had this, this great idea for a script and I was like, this is, this is so great. I mean, (laughs) I've never thought of this before. And then (laughs) I, no one's ever thought of it. (laughs) Nobody has ever thought of it. And I told my husband and he's like, oh, yeah, that's like that show. And I'm like, what? What? What No. How dare they (laughs) steal my idea? And like, Uh, you know, like I had an idea like, uh, you know, the movie Passengers. Yes. Yeah. I literally, I literally had an idea like that. And I saw the movie and I was like, oh, how dare they, you know? (laughs) But did you, but did you go it watch happens. it in the theater? Yeah, it happens. Um, but I I try not to. As an artist, it's actually somebody actually did tell me this in school. It's like your job as an artist is to steal, 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 steal as much as you can. <laughs> what? Steal from, yeah, like steal Great from advice. everybody, but don't like don't copy. You know, steal but make it your own. <laughs> And uh, it's a fine balance there. That's a fine it's, line. It's a you're very walking, fine line. Yeah, but uh, can, don't get caught. I choose to say I got inspired. <laughs> there, you oh, there you go. That's a nice that's way the, to package that's it the up. That's the key word right there. It's like, I got inspired. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, uh, I, I try to do a combination of things. You know, it's like what yeah. has, you know, what is interesting to people right now. I honestly mm-hmm. feel like uh, sci-fi is very happening right now. Yeah, superhero uh, sci-fi. Yeah, superhero sci-fi. Um uh, for a while, you know, we had zombies and vampires. Oh, yeah. um, that's finally faded down. I feel, yeah, I feel like that's kind of like <laughs> leaving this world. But, um, and it, I guess it doesn't work out because I just wrote a vampire film. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you did. <laughs> but I did try to not make it your typical vampire film. So, Good. so Thank there. Thank you. <laughs> No, there's no like glisteningly shiny no. vampires watching girls sleep, is oh, there? Oh God, no. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I just I try to you know put my little twist in what has worked before. Um, you know, try not to copy people, but I do definitely mm. do get inspired, you know, by other people's work. Yeah. Um, and you know, hopefully somebody will get inspired by my work someday. You know. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's how I, I view it. So <laughs> cool. Well, Daniel and I have an ongoing joke about new creativity and stuff, but like we need to get out of like all the sci fi and action movies. We need to get out of New York and leave it alone and, and move on <laughs> yes. to other like places. Like, man. <laughs> so. Yes. Aliens aliens never land in like rural Montana or like <laughs> or California or yeah, Oregon. anywhere else. It's all New York. <laughs> It's oh. Washington D.C. to destroy everyone, or New York <laughs> New to do York. crazy stuff, yes. and and raise the insurance premiums of everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, one of the, the best ideas I've ever had was to make a spinoff show called Insurance Agents of Shield. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> it would be a it would be a comedy, and they'd be basically falling. Like the office, but they'd be insurance agents dealing with the destruction of Avengers and oh and all the aliens and stuff. And big monkeys and all that fun stuff. Yeah, yeah, wild mutants and stuff like that. That's hilarious. So just make sure you have uh, Thor's lightning coverage on your insurance plan. Yes. <laughs> make sure that hammer is insured. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So we were talking about creativity and stuff. So what like what's your process when you make a film or a script? Uh, so when I, uh, to write a script or pretty much anything, um, and so it's, it's, a, it's, well, I, I'll talk about screenwriting. Um, it's a funny thing because honestly, I can literally look at a picture and that will spark an idea or mm-hmm. a song, um, you know, uh, something will, or a phrase, um, yeah. that will spark do, do an you- idea. Do you ever get ideas from dreams? Has that happened to you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I awesome. do. Me yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, my dreams will be a very expensive movie, but... <laughs> <laughs> High budget dreams. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> but uh, but yes, I, I do take from them. I've had a... I, I have a very vivid... Uh, I have epic dreams. 
I think oh, that's me too. <laughs> they, there's a term for that. It's the epic dreaming. I, I do quite a bit of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, anything can spark the imagination and I just go to town with a script. So with all that being inspired and being creative, I'm sure you get like writer's block. Um, well, I, I do get writer's block. Um, and sometimes I, ha- I have to go back to the script to the beginning and read from the start and yeah. try to ask questions as the character, like, um, you know, what's their goal or what is their main focus or, or what, what is it that they want to get out of the situation and try to go from there. Um, other times I just listen to music and that does it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever just leave a project for like a week or a few days and come back? Oh, all the too? time. I, I mean, I have unfinished, yeah, I have unfinished script. I have like three unfinished scripts, you know, because I just can't, you know, I, I like, I, I don't know where to go with them at that yeah. moment. Yeah. And then I, something will like spark, you mm-hmm. know, uh, how to continue. And I go back, you know, and I, but many times it's just forcing myself to, to just write. I, I mean, I, if I just, if I just go back and, and it's like, okay, just, just write up, you know, a few pieces of dialogue and then that will get me going. Well, when, when you're writing for different characters in a script, do you like how, I guess you're probably using some of your acting skill. Do you like have to put yourself in their mindset and you have to kind of pretend to be that character to say, how would they respond to this? And then how would this other character respond yeah. to the same situation? Yes. Is, that, is that part of the writing process? Yes. Yes, it is. And for me, for me personally, I literally, I literally have a conversation out loud yeah and your husband thinks you're crazy and, yeah he already does i mean he's <laughs> well i i talk to myself a lot like out loud um i always done that um and now with writing i do it more you know and then yeah. i do it in like <laughs> you, you need a soundproof room <laughs> yeah I, I really do because it's it's i'll be i'll write up a line and then i say it out loud and then i write a response you know to it uh-huh. and i say that out loud it's like huh. it's like being yeah. schizophrenic, you know, or having borderline <laughs> personality disorder for like that's writing, yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's literally how how it is. It's it's hel- it's kind of hilarious actually. <laughs> With all of these various uh, things you're doing, <laughs> which I think it's it, I relate to you because. I'm a creative person. Yeah. Um, I express it differently than you do, but yeah. I cannot find it in my soul to just do one avenue. Like, I can't yeah. just do wedding photos, which I do love. Yeah. But I can't just do wedding photography, or I can't just uh, make 3D art. Like, I have to do all these other things, or I yeah. just feel like my my brain's gonna explode. Um, but with all these different avenues that you you follow with your creativity, your writing and, and, and acting and performing, uh, what are some of your goals? Like, do you have like a five year plan or, you know, like like a, a maybe a one big dream you want to reach? Um, I mean, I, I don't know, because like it's it's like all of my all of my projects are in itself, like all of them are little dreams. <laughs> I would love to have a film like make it to like Sundance or something. Yeah. Like one Is of that those... like the biggest film like thing? That happens? I, it's one, it's one of them. Yeah. It's one of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, it's, it's a big one. Um, it's definitely, um, up there with the film festivals that you want to get accepted to uh, the, the Chicago film Festival is another one. And then like the okay. Toronto international film festival, Tribeca. If you win one of these, that's how it wins, right? Like there's a first place. Is that what happens? Or are there categories? Yeah, they have categories. And if you win, there are certain film festivals that are Oscar qualifying film festivals. Ooh, wow. So if you win that festival, you automatically get put on the short list um, huh. for contention for an Oscar. So like, Whoa. yeah, so like, um, it, it, it like goes on stages. So you have to win the festival and then you yeah. get put on the that list. I, I, I believe so. I don't quote me on this. I think there's a there's a step before that and then you get put on the list. From okay. that short list, they select nominations. Um that's why, you know, people do film festivals, is because you get mm-hmm. your film seen and yeah. if somebody takes an interest in it, you can get a distribution deal. Um cool. from, or, you know, if they see your short film and they really like it. They're like, let's do the feature. Um, nice. You know, maybe you'll get some funding for it. Um, yeah. It, that, 
never happens, but <laughs> <it could. laughs> I was gonna say, is there a list? Like, is there a list of movies that that has happened to that I could like that are Hollywood, you know, produced? Uh, of mine? No, I mean just in general. Oh, in I wonder, general, I wonder what um, movies have come out of these. Not too sure on that, but but oh, yeah. but but definitely, yeah, definitely. Cool. And some of them have big stars. Like some of them, yeah. are like um, I know that I was part of one. Um, it's called Little Woods, um, and it was actually a director screenwriter um, that uh, got into um, um, like a directing program for Sundance, and mm-hmm. Sundance actually funded the film, but it had um, Tessa Thompson in it, um, mm-hmm. and Lily James was in it. I don't know if you guys know who they are. Tessa Thompson was in Westworld. I know that. Yes. And she was also in Creed and she was also Valkyrie in Thor. And uh, Annihilation, I think. Yes. I, yeah, I believe so. And Lily James <laughs> plays Cinderella in the live action movie. Oh, cool. Yeah. So they were the leads in that movie that I was part of. Um, nice. And um, it was, you know, a, a, a smaller indie film, but, mm-hmm. you know. It's like a catch twenty two with with that. It's like if you can get an A lister attached, it's it's you have a really good chance of it getting getting yeah. it distributed. Yeah, that's cool. So if money was not an issue and nothing was an issue, but everything was at your fingertips, what would be a dream job that you personally would want to work on or be a part of? Uh well, I I would love to film one of my scripts, um, possibly act. Um, maybe direct, but uh, but it has to be one of my scripts. Uh, and it will probably have to be this one script that I'm really, really proud of. Um, it's called Consummation. Actually, it got nominated for Best Dramatic Short Screenplay. Cool. Uh, I f- yeah, I saw you posting about that some time I f- ago. I find out on the 22nd if I won or not. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I would want to make that. It's it's not a huge like action or special effects or anything like that, but because it's it's a it's a script that I'm proud of, I would love to have a nice budget to make it. I would attach A-listers to it. I would have Tom Hiddleston star in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask, oh, who Tom. are the A-listers? <laughs> yeah, for sure, Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> I don't know about the rest, but like, uh, he, like, you know, when I, when I write, sometimes certain actors come to mind. Um, yeah, and, <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. He was one of them. Um, He's a cool guy. I like him too. <laughs> He's really nice. I've actually met uh-huh. him. <laughs> wow, nice. Yeah, I would, that's what I would do. Man, if if I had an unlimited budget for a movie, oh man, I don't I don't know if I could ever make up my mind what to do. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's it's so <laughs> it's so hard because like, there's just so many. I regularly keep a track of my dreams. Uh, I I also have like ridiculously detailed and mm-hmm. um, epic epic dreams. Uh, a lot of them are story, not all of them, but some of them are very story based. Yeah. So whenever I have like a story based dream that you know could be a script or an idea for a short story. Um, I, I, I post on Facebook and I do hashtag Daniel dreams yeah. and I encourage anyone listening to this, <laughs> to look at that hashtag on Facebook because it is awesome and funny and like will blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. I've actually follow it. Like whenever you post, Good. I read it cause there it's, it's, I mean, I can't believe my brain sometimes. Like, honestly, I, I think that some people think I'm making these up because I have so much detail. Yeah. And I don't even put all the detail in the Facebook post. You know, it's a Facebook post. But um, I, I wonder if some people think I'm making them up, but I'm not. Like, it's just like my brain is just wild when it when it has a chance to do the dreams and when I can remember them. Because, you know, we don't always remember our dreams. Right. Uh, it's just like, wow, that was, I have to write that down. This is is awesome. (laughs) Yeah. I use Evernote for all my business and photography notes and and even personal family, you know, stuff to keep track of notes. Uh, but I I have a note in Evernote, which is like a, it's like a document where I have all my dreams that are like story dreams. And I keep, I have like 30 of them now and I love to just scroll through it and just read them. I'm like, oh, I have so many movies just waiting to have be made here (laughs) or sci-fi novels. Because I do, I do want to write sci-fi novels. That's one of my like long-term goals. And I've got a ton of them I'm just sitting on. (laughs) Yeah, do it. (laughs) It it will happen one day. Do it, do it. We're almost done here, but I got to ask this question. What are some of your favorite movies and why do you love them? Why are they your favorites? Um, 
I have quite a few, but I gotta say that like my top three is mm-hmm. probably Gattaca. I don't know if you've seen Gattaca. Oh uh, yeah. Gattaca. I I I saw that like yeah. I, I, I was pretty young, but it it stayed with me because mm-hmm. it's something that could happen. Um, yeah. And it was just so beautifully made, and the soundtrack was, was. just like amazing. Yeah. Um, very heartfelt. Um, mm-hmm. and I feel like that was like a high budget indie film. Am I wrong? <laughs> kind of, yeah. And it, and it at the time, um, the leads were like barely getting known. So yeah, yeah. So it was <laughs> Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman and Jude Law <laughs> had such a crush yeah. on Jude Law. I love Jude Law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not not the first time I've mentioned my my man crush on him in this podcast. <laughs> on Jude Law. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it all started with AI. After that, I was like, this guy yeah. is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gattaca's definitely one of them. Um, I love, love, love The Truman Show. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, so good. And that, that, is, that movie will stick with you, too. Yep, yep. You just never forget it. Especially when he, uh, I think that, that the scene that got me the most was when the dad comes back. Mm. And he really, like, I, like, he, you know, he was just so, like, I felt so bad for him because it's like, everything's fake. Like, even your dad's not real. But he was yeah. just so happy to see him. And I was like, <sighs> aw. <laughs> Dude, Jim Carrey, he's just one of the best actors. Him and, like, really Robin is. Williams. He really is. so phenomenal. They can do anything. Yep. Yep. I, I, I always tell people, it's like, don't underestimate um, comedic actors. They're, they're the best actors. Yeah. Very powerful acting abilities yeah. that, to make a good comedy. Yeah. Did you see 23 with Jim Carrey? I haven't yet. Oh, haven't watch yet. it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't yet. I've... For those listening, it does have some adult things <laughs> in it. There's some adult themes and scenes in it. But uh, wow, the story. is just, you, you might need to watch it at least three times. It's one of those movies, and it's just that good. So just that put it out there. You. Yeah. 23. Yeah. <laughs> also my favorite number. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> And uh, my, I think probably my number one, like ever, is Amelie. It's a French movie. Huh. Absolutely it, great movie. Well, yeah. How was that spelled? Amelie, it's uh, A-M-E-L-I-E. I, I, I think I might have seen, oh, yeah. No, I didn't see that one. I'm thinking of something else. Why is this movie so awesome to you? What, what do you love about it? So when it came out, like, it's just like everything about it is just so uh, whimsical. Uh, I love whimsical movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> it, it's it's just like so really well rounded. Like I, from a filmmaker's point of view, was really well rounded to me. Um, it had a great story. Um, it's uh, the production design on that movie was uh, freaking amazing. <laughs> the cinematography was amazing too. We Looks had a like it. great soundtrack. It it just the way it was filmed. Um, it just, I just had a lot going on for me that it just makes yeah. it really, really interesting. I mean, it is in, it, it is a French movie, but like, and a lot, not a lot of people have seen it, but to me, it's like, it's it's a great movie, and I recommend Very it. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, these these movies, movies, these movies that you've just listed are are so so good because uh, not just for one reason. They have you know great cinematography, great mm-hmm. story, great acting, uh, great production. It's just like all these layers just come together and make a great piece of art. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, being a filmmaker and then watching films sometimes can be like a curse because yes, <laughs> you're watching the movie and you're like, uh, like you you forget to actually like get you know like l- listen like pay attention to the plot. You're like like oh look look at that dolly shot you know that they just did <laughs> oh yeah that's that's a that's a slide you know and it's like oh yeah i know what lens they use for that you know and <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and you just picture you know how these things get filmed and yeah. um it you know it, it's cool but it also ruins it <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. uh, ever since like junior high when i started getting into 3d graphics and like just learning how 3D stuff is made for movies and how it translates into like live action stuff. Ever since like seventh grade, like I, I struggle with, with 3D scenes in movies because I love them so much, but then I'm deconstructing them and I'm criticizing Mm -hmm. them. And I'm I'm also trying to learn from them. I'm like, ah, just shut up brain. Just enjoy the dang movie. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, when Alita comes out and I'm able to talk about everything that I saw behind the scenes, I think you'll have a, you'll have a field day with that. (laughs) I'm sure. So much CGI in that movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't wait. 
Yeah, yeah. It was really fun. All right. So, Paulina, is there any plugs that you want to put, any connections you'd like uh, our listeners to go check you out on online, anything they can follow uh, for anything you're working on? So right now, um, we're now really trying to push a little bit of buzz for our um, web series that we're trying to, to push. So if you want to check it out, you can find us on Facebook. Just search Public Displays of Insanity and we, there's a page so it should come up. Just check out the page. We we have some like funny things, you know, pictures and uh, behind the scenes footage. We're going to have a trailer pretty soon for the show and then hopefully... Uh, we'll be able to start releasing episodes. Awesome. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, I'm looking forward to that. It's been <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time coming, and I, you know, I'm just hoping that we get a pretty good audience and people like it, and hopefully yeah. Netflix does as well. <laughs> All right. Well, Paulina, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. This was so fun. glad to finally get you on here. And I hope this is not the last time. <laughs> you can have me here anytime. And then when Alita yeah. comes out, I'll be I'll be happy to come on the show and talk about it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of the Visionary Variety Podcast. We would love to hear back from you guys on this episode or any other episodes. You can write us at any time at tvvpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, we also appreciate any comments or messages on our social media accounts. If you just Google the Visionary Variety Podcast, you'll find all of our links. <laughs> I'm not going to just list them because, you know, that just gets old. Just Google us, you know, like why do people even ask questions anymore these days? Just Google it. <laughs> well, thanks again for listening. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next time. So if you had no money, then we Wait, wouldn't have no, this question. No I don't money. know what I'm saying. <laughs> All the uh, money. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I said no money and stopped. <laughs> if you had no money, you'd be a true indie film. <laughs> Forget it. You're not making this movie. That's true. <laughs>